No time for snoozing, there's a ton of fabrication ahead on the ultimate tow monster, Suburban Gorilla. Plus one lucky co-host gets suited up for the chance of a lifetime. That's all today on Extreme 4x4. Welcome to Extreme 4x4 and another day working on our Suburban Gorilla project, our ultimate tow rig, where this truck is going to be just as happy on the trail as it will be towing our trail rigs. Now we started with an 87 Chevy Suburban, and then we got a hold of 4x4 bodies for one of their Urban Gorilla body kits. Granted, we spent 10 grand on that thing, but we're going to be turning a lot more heads with that than we will be spending 10 grand fixing up that old rusty Suburban. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hey, that truck's cool, it looks neat, it's got lots of power, and I wish I had one to drive, but I'm not building one. But wait, wait, just wait a second. Remember, the donor vehicle for this truck is an 87 Suburban. It's a solid axle GM truck. There's thousands of these things out there on the road, and the modifications we make to this frame apply to all those trucks. Like these two inch rough country leaf springs installed in the back last time, and now this week on the front axle, we're gonna do a coil spring conversion. But the first thing we're gonna to do today is an upgrade to any frame, and that is boxing it in. The whole point of boxing in a frame is to strengthen it by putting a plate on the inner side of the C channel. And that's gonna stop the frame from flexing up and down and twisting on itself. I've already stripped out all the brake lines and all the fuel lines, but if you're not careful enough, you might strip something out that's gonna make the frame a lot weaker. The part that Jesse is talking about is a cross member like this one right here. Now we already pulled one out of the front of this frame to put the Duramax in place and this one right here is in the way of our fuel tank. This 21 gallon polyethylene tank came with our Urban Gorilla body kit and we want to lower it between the frame rails right here. We could put it down in here but it's going to get in the way of our winch that we're going to put behind this back bumper so this cross member has to go but this adds a lot of strength to the frame just like rungs on a ladder this holds the frame together if you take too many of them out the frame's going to fall down so if we cut this out we got to replace it with something else. With a temporary brace welded to the frame The factory cross member is removed. <laughs> Holy cannoli, that was hard. Boxing plates are welded to the frame. An inch and five eighths hole is drilled through both the boxing plate and the original frame. And a new cross member is welded in place. Another trick you're going to want to remember when you're boxing in your frame is when you cut your boxing pieces, you want to cut them a fraction of an inch shorter than the frame itself. That way the weld will fall in the corner and weld on both pieces of metal. Whereas if you had it flush, you're only going to have your weld on one piece of metal and it'll be weak and it'll break easily. We need to replace the front engine cross member that we ripped out of here when we were mocking our Duramax engine into place. We're going to build a new one very similar to the one we built on the back. The only difference is, is this one will have a bend in it to go around the oil pan. Cross member made, we can go ahead and start making our transmission and transfer case cross members. But first, we got to get our engine in there and start making its mounts. And since this whole setup here is huge, it's actually bigger than any drivetrain I've ever seen before, we're going to pull this transfer case off so we don't exceed the limit of our crane. And just to give you an idea of exactly how big this thing is, let's throw a tape on it here and we'll give you an idea right off about the balancer. This thing is about seven and a half feet long. <laughs> That's a big drive train. And with the whole deal in position, we can assemble our frame side motor mounts. Tack everything together. 
then measure and build our tranny support. With the engine mounts built and tacked into place and the Hill Killer 1000 supported by that transmission cross member, we can slip our transfer case back in place. Thanks, Sid. Now, obviously, this thing is super duper heavy. That's why off road design suggests we use a secondary cross member to support the weight of this double case. Because otherwise, it's just going to be hanging off the flange of the transmission, and that's going to have a tendency to break. And I know there's a big space in here, but we had to put it all together to figure out what size that space was so we had the right size of spacer. Now, when you're building custom cross members like we are here, it's a good idea to match up your mount material. If you had a rubber engine mount like this rubber mount here, and then poly mounts on the back of the transmission like we've done, they can actually work against each other. So when you rev that engine and it rocks up and the back of the transmission is held tight, you can actually crack the case right in half. That's why we're going to be using Prothane's new mount kits. These poly mounts are different than your typical spring eye bushing. The compound is a lot softer so it's going to absorb that engine vibration, plus they come in a range of sizes. Try this on for size. Ian Johnson, monster truck driver. See how he does with 2,000 horsepower under his seat when Extreme 4x4 continues. Welcome back to Extreme. That's Marlo, our cleaning lady. Say hi to everybody. Hi, y'all. Hi, Marlo. Hi there. You know, Jesse, I like the trails, I like the rocks, but really, in my heart of hearts, I'm a man of speed. I know, I've driven with you before. That's funny. But you know, I got to go to the Indianapolis Four Wheel Jamboree and fulfill a lifelong dream. For 24 years, the Indianapolis four-wheel jamboree has been the race to win, where taking it easy is not an option. Back, back, if you're a tough truck guy, if you're a monster truck guy, show and shine, you want to grab the brass ring. You want to be included in all the rest of the legends of the past 24 years. I mean, it is one action-packed three days of 4 by 4 fun. For the fans at Indy, they want their fun done big. When it comes to motorsports and off-road vehicles, nothing's bigger and nothing's badder than monster trucks. So we came to the Indianapolis four-wheel jamboree to check out one of the biggest and baddest there is, the Raminator, and we're gonna talk to the driver, Mark Hall. With four straight titles, movie star good looks, and a rig that makes the fans swoon, Mark Hall is taking monster truck racing to the next level. Raminator! I think, uh, you know, for a lot of years, maybe we were, I hate to say this, but maybe we were kind of like the professional wrestling of motorsports. But I think now we're kind of coming around and we're starting to look more like a legitimate motorsport. And you know, the racing is, is, is just awesome, no, no doubt about it. It's more than awesome racing that's turning doubters into fanatics. You know, we can do a lot with these vehicles, and I think that's kind of the appeal to them too. Kids like them because they think they're nothing more than a big toy. Uh, you know, gearheads like you and me, we kind of want to see how they work. His first truck in 1986 had 7 inches of travel and 500 horsepower. The Raminator has 30 inches of travel and pushes 2,000 horses! And when you're making that kind of horsepower in a Dodge, you can only have one kind of engine. What kind there of There isn't any other kind. Is there? You gotta have a Hemi, you know? This is a 565 cubic inch Dodge Hemi. It's uh, supercharged, fuel injection. They run real strong for it. Now the coolest part of the drivetrain, the whole drivetrain to me, is the transfer case, because it's really different from every yeah. other truck. It's a, it's a quick change rear end. It's a 16 inch drop. You take this back cover off, and it almost looks like, uh, it's very similar to like a, a stock car, a quick change rear end. There's gears in there. We can change that gear ratio depending on, you know, on, on how long the course is and what we're doing. One thing people have seen a lot in rock crawling, but really it's always been in a monster truck, is the rear steering, right? Yeah, the rear steering's kind of, you know, that's another thing that kind of makes a monster truck a monster truck. We have a, a rocker switch mount on the left-hand side of the seat, and so if we're going to make a left-hand turn, we'll hit that switch to the left, we'll steer to the left, and the rear wheels will actually go to the right, so it'll make us swing around. You know, a few years ago, we came up with turn to center, which that helps a lot. It takes a lot of that guesswork out. So when you let that uh, switch off in the cab, he switches under this uh, cover here, we'll turn it back on and run the wheel straight. To have a chance to drive drive this quarter million dollar beast, I knew I had to put on that Johnson charm. You know, I've driven lots of trucks, I've built lots of trucks. What are the chances of uh, getting some seat time in there? You want to do that? Well, maybe we'll do that. Let's, let's give it a try. What do you think? I, I appreciate All it. Right.
you're in good hands. This, this truck will take very good care of you. All right, I promise to bring it back in one piece. Well, hey, you know, if you break it, I've seen your show. You guys do pretty good work. My whole life, I've had one dream. Everybody, Everybody give it up for you and the Riddler! You know, we'll just kind of take it easy, take it slow, kind of kind of get the feel for it to start out with. Now, shifting this thing, as you said, it's a... Yeah, we got push buttons. Push the first, the first button down, you go first to second, and the second button goes second to third. That part's pretty simple. It's just when you're in a race condition, all that stuff happens pretty fast. I don't know if we'll go quite that fast today. <laughs> I can't tell you how fast we went. What I do know, it was a blast. Okay, so we've had some fun at open field. Like, am I ready to hit some cars now? And you know, I, I gotta race this thing the rest of the weekend. And the way you was doing it, you might take my job. So you're, you're done for the day. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate it. And you know what? I gotta say it. The Raminator, it's the biggest, the baddest, and I'll put my name on it and say it, it's just, a, it's unbelievable. We were like right there, there. So that's my shadow, I think. Crash the truck. That was me. That was a blast. It was a great weekend. Sounds like you had fun. We did. We had a good time. You should try it sometime. Maybe next day. We'll hook you up. Bye. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4 in our Suburban Gorilla Build, or SUG for short. And with the frame box for strength, we can turn our attention to the front suspension. Now, as you guys know, the donor truck for this vehicle is an 87 Suburban, and K-Series trucks have these solid axle leaf-sprung front axles. And although they're great for strength, the ride on the road is not that good. So we decided to convert this truck to a coil spring front axle using a panhard and a four-link. We're going to be using these five-inch lift springs that you would find for a Dodge truck, a set of 5100 series shocks per side, and a set of control arms, all from Rough Country Suspensions. When the big three automakers scrambled to build better riding four-wheel drive trucks, most OEMs started building independent front suspension systems. Dodge stuck to their guns and refined the coil spring solid axle pickup. Since Dodge has some pretty good time invested in designing their front suspension, we're going to borrow some measurements as well as some parts from the junkyard. Since we're going to be building this system from scratch, we're going to be building one side at a time. That way the passenger side leaf spring will be able to keep the axle in place while we build our spring buckets and our link mounts on this side. Scavenging a bucket like this from a wrecking yard is a great idea because not only does it have the upper and lower link mount in place, it also has an alignment eccentric and a spot for a sway bar that we can add later. Now I know that everything we build here is going to be pretty much custom applied to this truck, but you can take ideas like this and use them on your own rig. Using identical holes in both right and left frame rail, we punched in some larger holes, slid our new cross member into place, this way we know it'll be square. Using the engine cross member and the one we just installed, we'll bend a hoop to act as the new upper coil mount. These are not the axles that will be used on the final truck, so for now we'll just tack the lower mountain plates. To get the final placement for this upper bucket took a little bit of work, and here's how we came to that final number. We measured the total height of this spring, and then measured up off the bottom spring bucket to get a baseline. Now we expect the spring to compress two inches under the load of the drivetrain, and we need a two inch lift on the front axle to match the rear. So we took this bucket and moved it down a total of four inches. Now that the spring buckets are taking shape, we can go ahead and start locating the mounts for our trailing arms by using the measurements that we got off of that Dodge Dock truck. The nice thing about Rough Country is that we can be using these arms for a lift anywhere between two to eight inches of lift. When custom building any kind of mount for a suspension component, it is a good idea to box it in for strength, as well as add gussets from the mount to the frame. Overbuilding a mount now with a little extra material will lessen the chance of it breaking later. 
With everything held in place with some good strong tack welds, we can turn our attention to the passenger side of the truck. And then we can lower it down on its wheels and if the ride height looks good, we can finish welding all the brackets and the buckets. Now that the frame is pretty much taken care of, we can continue on some modifications so we can fit this monster drivetrain in our truck. Plus, we want to get the body prepped before we send it out to get coated inside and out. The H1 that inspired the Gorilla only had four seats, and we needed more room than that. So we're going to be using Smitty Built's new Outland leather seats with adjustable lumbar support. They're fully reclinable, and the center council has plenty of storage compartments and cup holders. Now the set comes with these three pieces, but we're going to install them with a twist. We're going to be installing two of those sets. We'll have two bucket seats in the front, and then we'll put both of the jump seats in the back, along with the other two bucket seats. So in total, we're going to have six seats when we need them. This is a custom installation for this truck. But you guys riding around on bench seats, don't worry. Smittybilt has direct fit seat racks, so almost any truck can be treated to their own set of leather buckets. With our seats in place, we can start to plan out our steering. Now, we could have used the factory column from our donor truck, but the whole thing was pretty long and it could have interfered with our turbos. So we chose this full polished shorty column from I Did It. It's a tilt unit with built-in key and cruise control. Now, we topped it with a Grant silver tone carbon fiber look wheel, and then to connect this to the box, we used some Borgeson full roller U-joints and some double D shafting. How are those seats, Jess? Comfy? Mm-hmm. Well, as you can see, we got tons of work done today, and well, one of us is a little tired, but that's all right. But you know what? We got a couple more things to finish before we send this body out. We obviously got to build this transmission tunnel in here and mount the steering column in its final spot, but in the end, this thing, it just looks awesome. What do you think, Jess? Yeah, it looks, it looks great. All right, well, okay. Have a good nap. I'll take care of this. <laughs>